Have you ever had one of those projects where you say to yourself, there just has to be an easier way to do this? Well, that's the case with this project that I've been working on here. I have to make these um, very small plastic strips. And here's an example of uh, one of the finished strips. And it's, it's fairly thin and the, the plastic is uh, extremely uh, brittle. So you have to work with uh, caution. So the way I used to do it is we'd start off with this, you know, larger plastic sheet. And the only way that I could cut it into strips was the use of a, a table saw with a very fine, uh, the, the finest blade that I could get. But even with that, running it through the table saw, you'd get a few good strips and then you'd get a strip that, you know, it would just shatter into a million pieces. So once we had that, you know, kind of like the strips, they'd be a little, you know, about three times or twice as long as that. I'd use this saw here to cut them to rough length, always leaving a little extra so I could finish it here in the vise. Now I would use this, uh, the traditional vise here. And it's a great vise, it's a Kurt. And once we, you know, put it in the vise, now I have to machine all six sides separately you know, one, one side at a time. And it was just taking forever. And this machine is equipped with CNC, so it can, you know, run all by itself. But every move is a manual move when you're, when you're using, you know, these traditional methods of, you know, going from a pl plastic sheet, cutting it into strips, cutting it to, to rough length, and then using the traditional vise here to, you know, get your finished dimensions. And uh, best of all, the, the tolerance on the job is plus or minus a thousandth all the way around. So there really isn't a lot of uh, wiggle room for air. So I started looking into uh, a vacuum plate, and that's where I found the uh, Pearson Smart Vac. So what I'm doing now is I'll just take this, uh, this the, the, the piece of plastic here, and I put it right on the vacuum plate. I've written the program, and it will machine all five sides for me. And uh, I just hit repeat, so I have it just repeat as many times down as it can go down the sheet, and then I break them out. So we're going to get to that vacuum plate next. Okay, now that I've explained to you how I used to have to machine it, and all the hours that it would take just to you know finish the project, it seemed like it would take an eternity just to machine you know 20 or 30 pieces. And as you know, time is money, and uh, you don't have time to waste. So with this up, uh, the Pearson SmartVac here, I've saved a ton of time and a ton of money. Let me show you how I set it up now. So I did get another order for another 25 units of plastic. So I'm going to set the I'm going to set the machine up, and I still do need the um, the vise here. I, I do have an operation where I need it. So I'm just going to leave it on for now, and I'm just going to use this section over here. Um, so basically we got the gasket material and all you need to do is figure out you know the size of the part and um, start to lay the gasket material in the slot it goes in nice and easy and uh, go around the bend and you know the nice thing about the Pearson SmartVac 2 is you don't have to buy that costly vacuum pump. Um, this system uses the, the Venturi effect. So you just use your standard home air compressor, you know, shop air. And uh, all you need is 85 pounds of pressure and you're good to go. So I thought that was really great and uh, you know it saved me a lot of money and I'm able to you know get all the benefits here of a vacuum plate. So here we got the, uh, got the gasket material down. Make sure it's all in place nicely. And here's our stock right here. I'm going to put it down. Put it right on the vise. And right now it's not activated yet. So as you can see it's loose. You can move it around. So I'm just going to square it up just, just, by, just like that. And now I'm going to activate the system. Here we go. The system's on. I'm using standard 80 pounds of shop air. 
just going to push down on it and I'm going to try to pull on it this way. I'm going to push it this way. Can't do it. Can't push. I'm going to pull it. I'm going to pull it as hard. Nope. This is basically, it's glued down to that table. It's, it's going nowhere. You can't, you can't pick it up. So I have the machine all programmed and I have it set to repeat 25 times right on that plastic. So while this is running, I can go do other things now. I don't have to stand in front of this machine, uh, you know, using that traditional vise and, you know, machine all six sides. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be machining five sides and I can walk away and do other things and be productive with my time. We're going to get to the uh, machining part in just a second, so stay tuned. All right, we're ready to get started with the, um, the first step, which is using a larger end mill to basically cut off what is going to be the top of the part. So we're using a uh, 3 8 end mill. This is going to be the top of each one. I'm going to turn the machine on. I'm going to hit go. And if you're wondering, that's only cutting down about 15 thousandths of an inch uh, thick. And that's going to repeat about 20 times. And I need about 25 parts. All right, now that the tops have been fully machined, I'm ready to basically make the rectangular shape part. And uh, everything's all set to go. We're going to hit the uh, on. Spindle's loaded. Here we go. I'll leave the camera on for about a couple passes. I think you'll get the point. When we get to the end, I'll, I'll show you what all the pieces look like. All machined up. And then I'll show you how I break them out. Okay, the machine just finished cutting all the parts, and I'm going to pull it off with air. Hopefully that will show up on the video. I wasn't able to fit in my 20 units because the plastic was a little bit shorter, but uh, I was able to do uh, 15, and I'll do another 15 here. But I'm now going to show you how I can take advantage of the plastics being so brittle. So before when I would machine this, with the parts being so brittle, it was working against me. Now it's going to work for me, because now I'm going to be able to break out all these parts. And I'm going to show you this. Now we can break each part out. See, there's a almost finished part now it's going to be ready for the finishing operation and for that I've made this um, special jig that we're going to use I made this up and this is going to hold each individual part and uh, more on that in a bit now this is the finishing stage of the project. We're using that little uh, jig that I was telling you about so it can hold that little strip of plastic in place. And it's just got one little hole in the middle and a little slot down the middle with some gasket material. And that's all that's holding the part in place. You have to do very light cuts and slow speeds. Otherwise the part will, will come out. So this part does require 
a little more time, but the vacuum does hold the part uh, down flat. So that's the real nice benefit. Hope you've been enjoying the video, and uh, good luck with your vacuum plate system if you decide to go with one.